Hey guys, what is up? My name is Nicholas Yeo and I'm currently a core anaesthetic trainee in the Glasgow Royal Infirmary in Scotland. If you have ever been to the hospital and hear terms like IV excess, drips, vanflons, cannulation, lines, your best bet is you're talking about IV cannulation. So today, I welcome you to join me in my workplace where we'll be exploring what IV cannulation is, why is it really important, and also a short video on how IV cannulation is done at the end. Now, if you're unfamiliar of the medical terms, IV stands for intravenous, which means in a vein, whereas cannula is basically a plastic tube that can be inserted into the body. Therefore, IV cannulation involves a plastic tube sitting in the vein. Sounds nasty, isn't it? The reason why IV cannulation is really important during surgery is because it allows us to give you things like fluids, especially when you're fasted for well over eight hours. It also allows us to give you things like medications, antibiotics, or even anesthetic agents to slowly drift you off to sleep, and also blood products if warranted. Basically, IV cannulation allows us a quick and reliable way of administering medications to correct your vital signs, for example, your heart rate or your blood pressure if anything goes wrong during surgery. So what I have here today is called the Vanflon Pro Safety Device, which is an IV cannulation device which I use on a day-to-day -day basis to provide peripheral access to all my patients. One interesting fact about this, it is made in Singapore, the country which I'm born in. So these cannulas come in different sizes, colors, and gauges. So blue being 22 gauge, the smallest, and orange being the biggest that I have here, 14 gauge. And if you can see here, the size between the smallest and the largest cannula, huge difference. If you've not come across what a gauge is, it's basically an old fashioned way of measuring how big wires are. Take my coffee cup for example, I'm just trying to measure how many big pans can actually fit into this coffee cup. So the bigger the pan, the less pans can actually fit into this coffee cup. And that's why the smaller the gauge, the bigger the needle. Now some of you would then be wondering, if we, all we need is a plastic tube into the vein, why do we need different sizes of different needles? I mean, the bigger the needle, the more painful it is. That is true. And that's why sometimes we put a bit of local anesthetic in before we put a bigger cannula in or put you off to sleep first before inserting a bigger cannula in. The main reason why there are different sizes of cannulas available is because the size of the cannula affects the rate of fluids, medications, and blood products that we can give you. And this is all thanks to the French physicist, Poiset, who found out that the radius of the tube heavily influences the rate of fluid that can flow through it. Taking the green and the gray Vanflon, for example, a small difference in radius of 0.5 millimeters increases the flow from about 100 to 230 mils per minute. That means that through a gray Vanflon, we can actually push one liter of fluid in well under five minutes. And this is why we tend to boot bigger Vanflons in sicker patients because it allows us to give resuscitative fluids in a short amount of time. So let's have a quick look on some of the components of the Vanflon. Firstly, there is a plastic cover that sheaths the needle in, and this prevents needle stick injury while preparing to cannulate our patients. The introducer needle is inserted into the vein first before retraction, which allows the plastic tube to stay in the vein. If we move on to the midsection of the cannula, these are what are called wings of the cannula, which helps to secure the cannula in place after the needle has been retracted. At the back here is the back flow chamber. When the introducer needle hits a vein, blood will flow back and stop in this chamber, which gives us good feedback that we're actually in the right place where you want the cannula to be in. When the introducer needle is pulled out, it leaves the plastic tube in the vein. There is also another safety mechanism here which caps the needle and prevent any further needle stick injury when removing and disposing of the sharps. Now for the next section of the video, I will be showing you a live demonstration on how we insert IV cannulas into our patients. 
And for the medical students and the junior doctors out there, I will be showing you or demonstrating certain tips and tricks that we use to help improve our cannulation technique. Now, before attempting cannulation, it will be useful to have all the equipment ready for cannulation. This basically involves a tourniquet, alcohol wipes, saline flush, a cannula dressing, and the cannula size of your choosing. Now, before starting any procedure, make sure that you're wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment according to your own hospital or school's guidelines. We start off the procedure by applying the tourniquet on the arm. This reduces the black flow of blood back to the heart and also allows for the distension of veins. Next, we would clean and prep the vein or the area of choice to sterilize the area. Most of the time, a gentle rub with the alcohol wipe along the vein of choice is stimulating enough to distend the vein even further to allow for easier insertion of the cannula. We would then wait for the alcohol on the skin to dry up and as a wise person once said now, While the alcohol is drying, bugs are dying <laughs> I'm just going to freeze the video here to show you how my colleague is using her left hand to gently retract the skin back This is actually a really helpful technique especially in the elderly patients with looser skin as it helps to provide tension to the vein and also further straightens the vein where which you will improve your chances of getting the needle into the vein. I'm freezing the clip here again because there are two things that we can learn from this clip. Firstly, you can see how my colleague is lining up the needle in line with the vein with the appropriate angle before inserting the needle. This dramatically improves the chances of guiding the needle into the trajectory of the vein. Secondly, everyone holds the cannula differently. Learn what's best for you. My colleague here is using her index and thumb to hold the cannula with her middle finger on the wings of the cannula to stabilize it. I prefer holding it with my middle finger and thumb because it leaves my index finger free to manipulate the needle retraction. It's entirely up to you. Learn what's best for you. Once ready, the needle is then inserted into the vein. Flashback of blood will occur in the backflow chamber of the cannula once you're in the vein. And once you're in the vein, we'll retract the needle and you will see the backflow of blood into the plastic tube, which is the second confirmation that you're in the right place. We would then advance the plastic tube into the vein while the needle is slightly retracted back. And take out the tourniquet. This is to ensure the blood does not start dripping out of the cannula while you are reaching out for your saline flush. You can see excellent technique here as my colleague is pressing against the tube in the vein to prevent backflow of blood out before reaching out for the saline flush. The cannula is then flush to make sure that fluid can travel up the vein all right and it's not leaking out of the vein before securing it down with a cannula dressing. The wings of the cannula are then taped over the skin before the dressing is well fastened onto it. The date of the cannula is then sighted and taped onto the dressing so that the nurses and doctors in the ward know when the cannula was being inserted. Most of the time, cannulas would stay in for about 72 hours before removal and this is to prevent risk of infection into the line from the environment. And there you go, this is how we insert IV cannulas into all our patients. Well, that's all I have to share today. Thank you for joining me once again. I hope you've learned something. If you have any questions, comments, video suggestions, leave it down in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe. If not, have a nice day. Thank you.